brings me back here in Chicago. Um, I'd like to thank the co-chairs of tonight's event, Marissa and Sam, and also the, <laughs> and also the leadership of HRC Chicago board members, John Barry and Wally Brewster, who, by the way, just confirmed Thursday by the U.S. Senate to be our U.S. Ambassador to the Dominican Republic. He's recovering from knee surgery. Uh, but he's doing very, very well, and he sent me a text earlier tonight. It said, break a leg, Marty. <laughs> uh, tonight, we are here to celebrate that finally, finally, marriage equality is a law of the land of Lincoln. <laughs> and let me just like a few of the trailblazers who led us along this long, quite clear that getting the bill passed was, um, shall we say, not going to be a shotgun wedding, but took a months-long courtship that would require the help of the extended LGBT family. So leading groups that supported marriage equality banded together strategically under the banner of Illinois Unites for Marriage. And it was this coalition of groups working together that helped persuade key House members to eventually vote yes. And the Human Rights Campaign was a proud member of Illinois Unites for Marriage, and we salute the other leading members of that winning coalition. So please join me in acknowledging the amazing ACLU, Equality in identified and mobilized unprecedented numbers of marriage equality supporters. They collected postcards, they went door to door, not the neighborhoods, but the districts represented by representatives who had not yet said how they were going to vote. So we were pounding on doors in Peoria and shuttling volunteers to mainly Republican sections of suburbia. This was neither glamorous nor easy work but it needed to be done in order to pass the bill. And in the end, these efforts were successful, with three House Republican legislators voting for the bill, and one of the House Republicans who voted with us is here tonight. He voted for liberty, fairness. Please welcome Tom Cross. The day of the House hearing in February, a 
a bus of African American ministers and parishioners drove three hours in a snowstorm from Chicago to Springfield. Two of those leading ministers, Reverend B. Herb Martin and Reverend Otis Moss, waited until nearly 11 o'clock that night to testify in support of the marriage equality bill. And their leadership throughout the duration of this campaign was critical to the outcome. When the bill finally came up for vote in the House, a strong majority of African American legislators voted yes. When the ministers testified in favor of the bill, they were seated on a panel sitting next to the sponsor of the House legislation. Now, this House sponsor, well, I've only known this man for a few years, but in that time, I saw that he is a true public servant. He works on behalf of his constituents, but he also helps citizens less fortunate than less, less fortunate and those with little or no voice from all corners of the state. And most of the time, he does it away from the glaring lights, just busy doing his work in the house. But on the issue of marriage equality, he was thrust into the state and national spotlight. I don't think any of us will ever forget the feeling of pain, but also resolve that we felt when he spoke in the house on May 31st, when it was clear that not, the votes were not there yet, and so he had to withdraw his bill and hold it for another day. With his voice cracking and tears in his eyes before a hushed chamber, he quoted President Lincoln. Fellow citizens, we cannot escape history. The fiery trial through which we pass will light us down in honor or dishonor to the latest generation. And then he sat down, victory denied. Five months later, on November 5th, our fiery trial for equality ended, and because of this proud American with wisdom, tenacity, thick skin, but a gentle heart, marriage equality is the law of the land. Thank you, Representative Greg Harris. But the fact is, 
that historic as those rulings were, in reality, they left a lot of LGBT, LGBT people in this country just as unequal as they were the day before. You know, Chad Griffin, HRC's president, likes to say, and he's right, that those rulings revealed that this country is divided into two Americas. In one America, on the coast and a sliver here in the heartland, even though there's still some work to do, full equality is nearly a reality. But in the other America, across parts of the Midwest and the South, even the most basic protections of the law don't exist for our community. In Indiana, Tennessee, Georgia, and a majority of states of our country, you can be fired from your job simply because you are gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender. And as a father of two adopted sons, I am shocked that the state of Mississippi specifically mentions that gay men and lesbians cannot adopt children in that state. And there are still too many young people who are bullied at school or online or feel forced to hide their feelings of love at their places of worship or even at their home. Too many of them are suffering in silence or they take their own lives and they're perished from the earth because they have no hope. That's not acceptable. Certainly not in a year like we had. So we cannot rest on our marriage equality laurels. We've got to build on our success. We've got to fight harder and smarter than ever before. We've got to fight harder on this battlefield of equality against the confederation of well-funded and unrelenting opponents of equality. We've got to dig deeper, and we've got to set our sights higher. We owe it to the latest generation. It's now, it's now, it's now our responsibility to build a more perfect union. Tactically speaking, the Human Rights Campaign and others are going to organize in key House districts across this country to assure that the House follows the Senate and passes the Employment Non Discrimination Act. And where that's not politically practical, practical, we'll fight at the municipal level. In Birmingham, Alabama, in Bozeman, Montana, in Jackson, Mississippi, in Jacksonville, Florida. And if a transgender student in Texas at a high school wants to wear a tuxedo and not a dress for the high school yearbook, and she's told no by the school, HRC will shame that school just like we did. And just yesterday, that school yielded. got to build even bigger and more welcoming communities in churches, in synagogues, in mosques. We have to be in business boardrooms and hospital rooms, in city halls as well as school halls. And finally, this year, HRC has set a bold goal. A goal to bring marriage equality to all 50 states in five years. But fellow Americans, our manifest destiny of equality is not reached until we have equality everywhere for everyone. Until two Americas finally, finally become one. Until our beloved country lives up to her promise of liberty and justice for all. Thank you for the question.